springtime and all of its beautiful glory has officially arrived here at the farmhouse and I want to spruce a few things up, bring some of that freshness and color and life that is so beautiful outside to the inside and really embrace and enjoy it. Recently over on my podcast, the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, I was chatting with Michaelin from The Nester. She helps people and women and all homemakers to make their home beautiful and help you to make decisions. That's the, the biggest thing about decorating is scared of making the wrong decision. So we chatted that out. But anyways, one of the things that we talked about was the temptation to think if I just add something, if I just buy something new. If I go to Target and pick up the latest line of pillows, then my house will be beautiful for the season ahead. And that's tempting. I, I honestly think those things too. I get on and I think, oh, maybe if I just got this certain block print pillow or this little, you know, happy spring decor piece, then my house will feel like spring. But a lot of times instead, it is subtracting, taking away the clutter, taking away things that suggest the season that was before. So maybe whenever transitioning from spring, taking away heavy decor pieces. I had some knit pillow covers like cable knit that needed to go put that somewhere else and then add in freshness. Every year I think about these spring things, but then really what makes my home mostly feel like spring is just adding in some potted herbs, some potted tulips, fresh, beautiful colors like the green linen on the apron I'm hanging. Maybe I'll swap a few things around. That's another trick with decorating is just taking what you already have. If you're feeling bored with your space, instead of adding new things, moving things around, maybe swapping out a chair that's in one spot, putting it in another spot, swapping pillows around. Usually your home looks, if you've at some point decorated it or you know taken care to make it beautiful. It would look very beautiful probably without any new changes to the outside eye, but you yourself have just seen it too many times. I have this all the time where I'll change something around. People will say, well, why'd you change that? It looked so good before. And really it's just, I'm sick of it. And so I just need to fluff things a little bit, swap out a little pottery here, an art piece here, maybe put in a new print, maybe switch them around on a different wall. This makes me feel like it's a fresh new space. I have little spaces around my home that change out seasonally, usually whenever I'm just feeling a little bit bored with it. These shelves are one of them. I'll swap out different colored pottery for Christmas time, or like today I put up some fresh herbs and I'll change out the colors, maybe move things around or add some canisters with different flowers and sugar and ingredients like that. Though very small changes, they really make all the difference. Whenever my kids and my husband walked in after this nap time, so a lot of this stuff I get accomplished whenever the baby and the toddler are down for nap, the big kids are outside with my husband, they come in and they all said, it looks very springy in here. So it's really just these small changes that can make such a big difference. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. It doesn't create a whole lot of waste. We can actually use these herbs while also enjoying them. I don't have to store anything away whenever I want to swap things out again. That's my favorite kind of decor. Another thing that came up with Mike Willen on the podcast was something that she calls plant math and how whenever we let a plant die, we feel like we can't buy another because we don't deserve it. But then she talked about how much a plant costs and the amount you're actually paying per month to own a plant, even if you kill it in three months, it made me think, I'm gonna add more plants. I'm not gonna let guilt of letting plants die stop me from enjoying their beauty. Taking a break from my spring farmhouse refresh to tell you about today's video sponsor, something that we love here in our farmhouse that helps to make it cozy any time of year, and that is Birch Mattresses. Birch is a natural and organic mattress company that makes sleep products that you can feel good about having in your own home. For me, I switched over to organic mattresses many years ago because of the off-gassing that happens in the conventional manufacturing process with mattresses, we spend a third of our lives asleep. So it makes sense that that environment is one where we're breathing in fresh, good air that's restorative to our health. And I love Birch Living for the quality products that they provide in this area. We have three Birch mattresses here. We have a Queen Lux as well as two of the natural, well-loved Birch mattresses. The Lux 
is a premium upgrade with eight different layers of organic cotton, organic cashmere, organic wool, organic latex. It also has a Euro top that makes it comfortable and luxurious. The steel coils limit motion transfer. They provide adequate support. And so you have this balance of all natural, organic, but also quite comfortable. The best part about all of this is that Birch ships free in the US and comes very easy to assemble. It pops out of the box and you can bring it to wherever in your home you are upgrading your sleep. Birch also offers a 25 year warranty as well as a 100 night sleep trial so that you can be sure that what you are getting will be the comfort level you are expecting as well as last your family for a good long while. April is a great time for spring cleaning. I've been doing a lot of spring cleaning around the farmhouse and I'm sure many of you have been as well. You may also be thinking about how to get rid of any unnecessary toxins and allergens. So this is a great time to take a look at upgrading your bed. Birch mattresses are GOTS and GreenGuard Gold certified meaning they're free of any polyurethane-based foams and harsh, unnecessary chemicals and pollutants. I love my Birch mattress and I know that you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, make sure to check out Birch and use my link, birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse for 20% off your order plus two free Eco Rest pillows. You can also click the QR code on the screen. Okay, in all of my talks of don't buy new things and add new things at every seasonal change just to make your house feel like spring or whatever, in all my talks of that, I did get a couple of bundles of fake flowers. So I got some fake tulips that I put on the wood stove. I put the real ones back on the table and then did the fake ones on the wood stove. It occurred to me that I should put something on the wood stove because when you look out from our kitchen, which is where I spend a lot of my time into the rest of the house, that beautiful wood stove is so lovely all winter, but right now we really don't need it anymore. And so some faux flowers there add some life, add some beauty to a space that I'm really, I enjoyed the, the fire so much, so I'm kind of missing, but it did give it that fresh sense of life. You can find some faux flowers that are very realistic looking. And since we don't have a ton of flowers that come up every single year, mostly just our summer flower garden, I decided that I did want some of those. So I did add those but with a space that's already a bit minimal, it just added that pop of life that I was looking for. Another thing that I consider spring decor are eggs. We have so many and I carefully curated my flocks so that we would have a lot of different colors. So they'd be very beautiful. I first learned this trick using eggs as decor whenever I visited my friend Sarah Jo from Briarton Farm. I went out to her farm in Kansas and she had eggs all over her whole house. Now, I'm not quite that brave because my kids are just a bit more rowdy. And we noticed that very fast while we were there because she had some scaf scaffolding out by her barn. And she said her girls had never touched it. The second we got there, we had kids climbing. So anyways, I'm going to mostly just keep the eggs to the kitchen, not all over the house. But it was so beautiful at her house. She had eggs at the top of the steps. She just, since they can be out if they're not washed, she used them as decor. And it was so pretty and it inspired me to use natural things like that for decor. Whenever it's springtime, chickens start laying a lot more eggs. And so it does go with the season. Now I am cleaning up the mudroom. A few videos ago on here, I shared our basement pantry. Now that that space is a kitchen or an extension of the kitchen space, I think it's fitting to move the freeze dryer down there instead of keeping it here in the mudroom. And now we can pop this window open. I'm putting this chair here just as a placeholder. This chair goes outside. But another thing that Michael and I talked about whenever you're struggling to make decisions in your home, using something as a placeholder just to see if you like it, to see how it functions before investing in a piece that will go somewhere where you're not really sure it'll be needed and loved. So I'm popping this door open, adding a little hat to give it a spring vibe, cleaning up and then putting the chair there to see if that is what we want in that space. Another thing I'm doing is taking all of my dried florals. I made these last winter. Some were florals dried from our garden. Some were just some green things and weeds I picked from around the property, made a very lovely arrangement for the entire winter, but I'm ready for something more fresh and springy. Again, these are faux flowers. But last year I purchased some faux flowers and I enjoyed them for, I say last year, but it was probably a couple years ago. I enjoyed them for such a long time and I actually still have them and I'm going to put them somewhere else in the house. So they last such a good long while that if you do find some that are real looking, 
it's a great investment because it brings a lot of joy. Fresh flowers bring even more joy, but you can't always have them. You don't always have access to them. And whenever I look across my house and there's several little spots for my eye to land with a pitcher of blooms, it definitely makes me feel like I have a springy put together space. I definitely enjoy it. And it's time to clean up some of the little bits that fell down from the weeds and the greenery from my last arrangement and just freshen up for springtime. After chatting with Michaelin from The Nester on the podcast, I did go purchase more plants. This one I found here just at a thrift shop for six bucks already in the little pot that it was in. We were standing in line purchasing a few other things and I spotted it and sent my daughter over to grab it because that is something I love having around our home. And I have felt that guilt of letting them die and then feeling like, okay, I can't handle plants. But then thinking back, okay, that actually lasted me a whole year. It costs next to nothing. It's okay. It's okay if you can't keep up with watering them or if something happens, just go buy some more plants. I'm giving you permission. Another thing that we did here for our spring refresh is repainted the entryway. I talked about this last fall or winter about how I wanted to give it a new look in here because it it feels very washed out with the trim being white and the door being tan on the inside. I thought, what if we painted all the trim, all the ceiling, the walls, the same color to give this tiny little space some more impact? And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I meant to do it over the winter to make it a bit more cozy, but we finally got this done. It's the same color that we have in the bathroom that's nearby and then also in the mantle that's in our bedroom, which is nearby. It is Sherwin-Williams Balanced Beige. I really like the way this color feels. It doesn't really have any pink or different undertones. It's mostly just a very, as the name suggests, balanced beige. I still had my Christmas wreath up. It had a lovely little bow on it because I made it at a wreath making party and I found this pretty velvet ribbon at the party. It's too pretty to put in the basement. So I just took the ribbon off of my Christmas wreath and put it on a little faux spring wreath. I'm very happy with this one. Here's another example of something I bought, but I didn't buy very many things. I mostly just swapped things around. This one though faux looks very realistic. I also took the basket from in the kitchen, put it here on the entryway. I added a plate to the wall in the kitchen underneath the cow painting, just trying to bring lots of color and new life. And it definitely feels a little better in here. I stack magazines here in the entryway that I'm currently reading, but sometimes I just get a few too many. So I'm gonna minimize that down and water my plant and enjoy these warm springy days. You know, I'm talking about adding in fresh things like plants and eggs. Sometimes all that needs to happen for a spring refresh is just to edit things back and give it a thorough cleaning. That feels so good, so fresh. Any day that I can open up all the windows in the house, I'm also doing that. April here where I live is one of the best months to do that. Well, pretty much April and October probably gives the most opportunity for that. So I'm enjoying opening up bathroom windows, the front door, creating that cross draft, that breeze that flows through the house and makes everything feel nice and fresh. I do it in the kitchen and then open the back door. I love it whenever you can feel the wind and the breeze kind of whip through the house. See a candle flickering and the linen blown in the breeze. These are the things I romanticize about April and country living. You know, even if you don't live in the country, you can do all of this. I did this when we lived in our last house that was right in town. I decorated in this way. I brought fresh things in seasonally. I opened the windows. I still had this feeling, this vibe that 
I love so much this time of year. There really isn't much to do in the bedroom except for clean it, water the plants, dust the mantle. I already feel the colors in here already feel like spring. Earlier I was talking about subtracting things and paring down and editing down instead of always adding more for decor. One thing I did recently was get rid of the painted couch. So I still have the painted chair here, but the matching painted couch, I ended up wanting to move that because nobody ever actually sat there. Sometimes you almost have to see it gone to figure out what should go there. And that helps you to make decisions by using things as placeholders, by editing back. Now, after seeing that space open, I have decided that we want a piano there. So now I'm kind of in the market for an antique piano, but I really didn't see that while that couch was still sitting there. Sometimes you just make these changes very incrementally. You don't have to have a whole plan before just starting and putting one foot in front of the other to see what might make the most sense. I can't wait for this entire little homestead to come to life. I see poking up from the ground my peonies or peonies, depending on how you pronounce that. I can see the hydrangeas are all starting to bud and there's blooms on the apple trees and the pear tree. It's only a matter of time before we need to mow the grass and this place will just be so beautiful. It's better than any home renovation, any work that I could do on my own, just the Lord provides a beautiful space outdoors in the spring and summer, and I am so ready for it. With every season, there are always several foods that are on my list of things that I'm excited to make. Of course, we live in the modern day. We can make all things year round because we can find all things at the grocery store, which is a modern marvel, and I do appreciate that a lot. But there are certain things that just taste better certain times of year. Soups and chilies and heavy roasts, those are all wonderful all winter. They're hearty, they're comforting. And then in the springtime, there are certain foods that you can add herbs to, they feel fresh, they feel light. You can add in things that come from the garden or come locally. Well, one thing that I enjoy making in the spring and summer is focaccia. So I'm gonna be making a sourdough focaccia. This is over on the blog, just like all my recipes, you can go over to farmhouseonboon.com and print them off. But I wanna tell you that I actually made a mistake whenever I was making this focaccia because I was trying to test it as it is written in my upcoming cookbook. And I forgot that when I put a half a cup of olive oil, that part of that was for drizzling on top. So I added in way too much olive oil, but it was very hard to work with. So that's why I'm not gonna change the recipe permanently. I'm pretty good at working with dough these days. And so even when something's like super hydrated, I can still handle it. 
So I'm not 100% sure I want to change the recipe, but it made this crispy, flaky, I don't know if flaky is the right word, but very like crispy and light because I added a half a cup of oil to the dough. So whenever you go see the focaccia recipe over on the blog and there's a quarter cup in the dough and then a quarter cup on top, if you want to be brave, add a half cup of olive oil to that dough because it made the best focaccia ever. So I'm probably only gonna ever make it that way here in my own kitchen. Warning, it's very hard to handle. But it made it less doughy, less bready, so much lighter and airier. I also had some sourdough in the fridge from last night and I decided that I wanted to score a flour on it. You know, just thinking about springtime, trying to do all the springtime vibes. This focaccia dough has been fermenting for probably 12 hours or so. You can get away with longer. Anytime something has oil in it, it doesn't over ferment and get unworkable nearly as quickly. So maybe it's been going longer. Honestly, I'm not totally sure, but it is bubbly. It is airy and soft and I'm going to bake it. It's gonna be so delicious. I'm also gonna to top it with some fresh rosemary and any herbs honestly would taste so good with this and then serve it alongside a marinara dipping sauce. Actually, my daughter is going to make this into sort of like a charcuterie type of lunch. She'll just put out several different things like cheeses and meats and fruit and some focaccia. Just makes for a very easy lunch. You are having a lovely spring. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse. Mm -hmm.